Hi all and welcome to the Truth, Honour and Integrity Show. My name's Thomas Williams. This is the events that changed the world, part three. Buckle up and enjoy the show. In the first two explosive parts <coughs> to this series, we uncovered the reality of the existence of ETs, craft and some disturbing aspects related to the why they were here, their purposes and goals. We also found out the depth of the cover-up surrounding this topic involving the Majestic Group, CIA and above government level think tank groups. We also found out how and why those groups now secretively run our world via the use and attainment of advanced technology and knowledge and have by and large used it against we the people. We the people have a right to know these life-changing events and knowledge for the advancement of our species and not allow it only into the hands of what I would describe at this point as psychopaths. These psychopaths intend to keep the old system running of harvesting humans for their own gain and power. Now, what is covered tonight, these are two older documents that ties into part one and part two. And whilst I can't verify it all at 100%, there is sufficient elements in both of these pieces that bear out the larger truth behind what this is labelled as a conspiracy, except it's not. Now, where I believe there are elements of deeper truth or parts that don't resonate, I have provided a differing narrative for people to ponder on. The world needs to know these truths so we can counter back and prevent many of the largely hidden under and over world denied to many of us. Out of the dark and into the light is a premise of what THI is all about. Truth should never fear investigation and on that score they have riddled us with lies, distortions and outright destroyed our free will and sovereignty for their own ends and serve their gods and goddesses, none of which there has been evidence to date of being beneficial to we the people. Right, we begin this show with an input from one of what is known as the Super Soldier Group, with deep connections to the often hidden world of Black Ops, this is called Above the Maximum Secret by James Casbolt. Now this was put out quite a few years ago now and so dates and figures need to be taken into account at the time of writing. Much of what was reported in these pieces has since been dealt with at varying levels so don't think much of this is still happening on the re levels that was reported back then. It still goes on but a much reduced level. Now, Casbolt also went by the name of Michael Prince and was sentenced to a rather excessive jail term for stalking, blackmailing and so-called terrorising his ex-wife. And he was given 12 years in prison for that. Now, whether that event was real or not should not detract from the information given out because it does match with much of what we have put out, compromised agents or those who break free of their programming are often targeted and jailed or sent to mental facilities for further, quote, training, unquote, as they call it. The same thing also happened to Leo Wanter, remember, and many others. So, James Casbolt, and this is in his words, I will interject with certain pieces, worked on covert MI6 cocaine trafficking operations with the IRA in London between 1995 and 1999. My father, Peter Casbolt, was also an MI6 agent 
and worked with the CIA and Mafia in Rome in 1993 in operations secret trafficking in cocaine and heroin. Now, the global drug trade led by many factions of the global intelligence community that cooperate together, MI6, CIA, Mossad, etc., in other words, the Five Eyes, is worth at least $500 billion a year. This is more than the global oil trade. The MI6 controls many of the other intelligence agencies in the world, and MI6 created the CIA in 1947 and still controls it today. What this then means is, is that the MI6 is the OSS group. As it was the OSS who created the CIA, as we stated in the From Russia With Love 7 show. Now this drug money was from black operations, or in classic Orwellian terms, MI6-CIA, inappropriate funds, it is called, is being used to finance government and military projects classified as above the maximum secret. Now these operations include enormous worldwide coverage of UFOs, and the construction and maintenance of deep underground military bases known as DUMS. Now, there are many such bases around the world, but James gave a short list. Dulce in New Mexico, Area 51 in Nevada, Brecon Beacons in Wales, Los Alamos in New Mexico, Pine Gap in Australia. The Snowy Mountains in Australia, the Nyala Range in West Africa of Kindu in Africa, next to the Libyan border in Egypt, Mount Blanc in Switzerland, Narvik in Scandinavia, Gotland Island in Sweden and many other places. I can name quite a few others, Vancouver Island, Whitley Bay. Um, Dugway the list goes on and on and on Cheyenne Mountains is another one now these projects are being carry out, carried out by a secret and unelected international government agency connected to the United Nations now the UN is the United Nations not United News Channel although one wonders at times. Now this is likely what I would know as the world government, not the world council, that has operated in secrecy for many years until our show exposed them around two years ago with the help of the trustee, and most of them, as I understand, are not human. Now, Casbolt says there are at least 1,400 of these dumbs worldwide and 131 in America alone, with two underground bases being built annually in the USA at the moment. Now, I think this document was about seven or eight years ago, if memory serves me correctly. Now, the average depth of these bases is four and a quarter miles underground some shallower and others deeper. The bases are, on average, the size of a medium-sized city. Each dumb base costs between 17 and $26 billion to build, which is financed by MI6 CIA drug money, and each underground base employs 1,800 to 10,000 workers workers, not slaves, as mentioned in a recent show. A nuclear drill used to dig underground, and this drill cuts through the rock at tremendous speeds and literally melts the rock to form a smooth glass-like surface around the edges of the tunnels. 
Now that machine, as I understand it, is not our technology and is based on off-world technology. Casbolt goes on. On May the 20th, 2008, I personally received information from a former member of the NSA through third parties and he wanted to protect this man's identity and so we'll call him G. Now this is the first time that this information had been made public at the, that time. Now G was subcontracted by the NSA in the late 1980s and worked for the NSA until 1992. He was a senior electrical engineer at the Los Alamos underground base in New Mexico and G also worked at the Alamo Gordo Dump in New Mexico and also at an underground base in Hawaii. Now he said the Los Alamos base is three kilometers deep and the size of a small town. And while he was there, he witnessed rows of caged humans, tall, grey, reptilian aliens. And G says the NSA was very tough on all subcontractors and the people worked under severe conditions. A lot in those dumbs are contractors, not slaves. And according to G, the US federal government, the USAF Air Force and the DOE, Department of Energy, to administer the Hawaii Dom in which he worked. And this base, as I said, goes down three kilometers and also extends out to the Pacific Ocean. It was here that three very tall, muscular, Nordic men, who according to G were reptilian human hybrids because their eyes changed to have vertical slits for the students. And they chased him down the road and threatened to kill him because he heard them talking about some high technology. Now, understandably, however, G was emotionally scarred by these experiences and does not like to talk to people about them. Now, I personally can confirm the caged humans narrative. And I speculate that many of these in the past were the former missing in action or described as prisoners of war out of Vietnam and several other war theatres of operations. The description of this was known as Hotel California. You can check out, but never leave. Perhaps that makes more sense now. There are other types of glass cages where humans and others are used as batteries and or food in and on certain facilities. Now the movie Fire in the Sky reveals that. But this was also revealed in the series The 100 in season 2, The Grounders and the Reapers. G for Grounders or Greys, R for Reapers or Reps. US military in underground bunkers as well. Elite bunkers with all kinds of opulence is their underground cities is in there as well, all in the first two seasons. And there is more in that show than you realise. It is telling you human history, what the real arc is, what the real pole star is, and where we came from. Casbolt goes on. I was informed on May 23rd by this source that in June there would be enormous amount of artificial earthquakes projected by HARP on the west coast of America and that the dumps had already been evacuated and closed. 
and that turned out to be 100% act accurate because between June 21st and June 28th there were at least 400 earthquakes on America's west coast. And Casbolt posted all this information on the DEUS, D-E-U-S, Pro Productions Forum on the net and within, within hours the post was hacked and removed. By executive order, the NSA is exempt from all laws that do not specifically name itself in the text of the law. Which basically means it can do whatever it wants and not answer to anyone. Now this is something that I've said all along. The term national security is not about protecting the people or this country. But these rogue nefarious groups and their operations largely against the people. And this is also largely due to its interaction with extraterrestrial species and their distorted view that people are children and cannot deal with the truth. Now, by and large, I have to agree that statement is correct. But that is not the real reason to keep this all a secret. The real reason is for the select few to garner control and also to protect the fake program known as religion. Why religion, some may ask? Because some of these entities they have been working with are presented as the gods. The Lord, for example, in your holy books, they are neither holy or godly. Casbolt goes on and says currently there is an internal war in the global intelligence community over the alien agenda. This is between positive and negative factions. Nice terminology that, familiar to our shows. And that is correct. And why, as I understand it, they killed off the original Majestic 12 group as too many within that closed circle wanted to bring the truth to the public at a later date. They killed them all off. Now also added into the mix of Casbolt's narrative is there is a competition between the differing branches of the military as to who controls the ET narrative. And it is the Navy to much chagrin from the other branches. Why? Because that group gets more funding. Casbo goes on and says, as I understand it, one of the main negative factions is a group centered on MI6 and the CIA called Aquarius Chimera. Chimera is half man and half beast, seen frequently in Egyptian hieroglyphs, and they are very nasty and evil-based groups. And this group is covering up the truth, blatantly lying, discrediting or killing anyone who comes too close to exposing what is happening. Now, Caswell said there was a positive group focused on naval intelligence called COM-12, resistance movement, which is leaking accurate information about the alien agenda to the public arena. Now, me personally, I'm not sure I would trust that group either, as it comes more of a case of controlled opposition, like MUFON, which was created and ran by the Majestic and CIA agents. And that was revealed in part one and two of this series. Casbolt said, <clears throat> when the missile, not the plane, hit the Pentagon on 9-11, it hit the building's naval intelligence section. And this was part of the internal war between Aquarius and COM-12 being fought. Funny we heard part of this in a recent other show, isn't it? 
I digress. Now, what I understand is, is um, that hit on 9-11 was a deliberate attempt to take out what was known then as the White Hats Group. And all on the internet since then are agency-based clans. All of them, in my opinion. Now Aquarius also enlisted the help of Hollywood and the mainstream media to distort the facts of the alien agenda and blind the public to the truth. Indeed they did. But I guess... It just wasn't the dawning of the age of Aquarius you all thought then, is it? And it's funny how many, or how so many alt-media shows and personalities run under the banner of the CIA, uh, CIA project names, is it not? Camelot, Avalon, Able Danger, to name but a few, are all CIA project names. Coincidence? Casbolt mentioned a Sir Martin Wakefield Jackham, who was the director of the Telegraph newspapers in, in the UK in 1986, and he was also connected to MI6 and is involved in laundering MI6 drug money through the Bank of England. Jacob was the director of the Bank of England from 1987 to 1995. Former CIA chief William Casey was head of the board for the ABC media network. And many insiders refer to the ABC network as the CIA network. <laughs> so having heard last week about RCA being involved in this, now we have ABC. Of course, ABC is the start of the alphabet, just like Alphabet Inc. is the start of Go Ogle, both of which are linked back to the alphabet agencies, CIA and NSA. But the NSA is just a subsidiary of the GCHQ in the UK, and maybe the GCHQ is really just the OSS. I hope you got all that. The group of grey and reptilian aliens from the Chimera group who work together with the military at underground bases is called MIEC, Military Industrial Extraterrestrial Complex. This is a malevolent organisation, as you will see with the following information. Casbolt says there are benevolent ETs on this planet and these groups are not part of MIEC and are of the Pleiades, Andromeda, Lyran, Procyon, Tau Ceti, Sirius and Umo. <coughs> now for further background on that knowledge, the Lyrans are the original version of most of our type of humans. The Tau Ceti are the Vulcans from the Star Trek series. And Umo revolves around a binary star called Wolf 424, which is 14 light years away from us in the Virgo constellation, and is largely made up of Lyran and Pleiadians, and that was likely an outpost for refugees from other planets during several great wars. Casbolt said these groups seem to work together in some kind of federation protective. And on February the 20th, 1954, a delegation of these positive groups met with the Eisenhower government in an unsuccessful effort to reach agreement on the US thermonuclear weapons program. Now, the obstacle to these negotiations was that these ETs were not willing to provide technology that could have been used by the industrial military factions of the Eisenhower government. These human-looking beings who love peace have refused to be co-opted 
in the emerging military industrial extraterrestrial complex in the USA, Britain, Russia and other parts of the planet. Now, for me personally, I'm not sure that that information is wholly correct. I believe those that met uh, Eisenhower in 54 were actually malevolent, not benevolent. But you have to consider <coughs> the fact that Casbolt worked for malevolent groups in these programs. There's no good groups in the super soldier programs. Unlike what we see with the alt media and the factions game, their definition of malevolent differs greatly to ours. Like I said, there is no faction or never has been a faction solely for and by the people. And this is why we need to build the people's club. We have to get our own power back. On July the 11th, 1934, the first Orion grayscale treaty took place on board a Navy ship in Balboa, which is Spain. The 7-11 date is not a coincidence and neither is the store of the same name. It's a CIA storefront in many cases. This was one of the most important events in the history of mankind because it put us in a role for which we were not prepared in relation to being a host of a malevolent extraterrestrial race. The US federal government disregarded the United States Constitution doing so and not telling the people. It was here that the deal was struck between the Ashes, representing Orion's reptilians, and the representatives of the US intelligence community. The treaty stated that in exchange for the Ashes to provide technology, anti-gravity, metals and alloys, environment, free energy and medical technology, the government would allow the Ashes to continue unimpeded with human abductions. Now this was only agreed to if a list of abductees were provided to the government and the abductees returned unscathed with their memories of the events erased. How nice of them to consider that minor detail. In 1944, the second treaty extension was signed, and Casbolt says he has very few details of that, and from my perspective he said that was likely the Aldebaran and Vril groups, exactly, who were working, he said, with the National Zionists and the SS in Germany, more commonly known as Nazis. And there you have it. Yet again, another confirm of Nazis being Zionists, and the Zionists are the foot soldiers, in my opinion, of the reptile group. Hebrew Anunnaki is the term I came up with. And the more you look, the more you see. In May 1954, again under the Eisenhower government, the third extension of this treaty, called the Treaty of Greada, G-R-E-A-D-A, -E was signed. The Ashes and Reptilians violently abused the terms of this treaty, as we will see later in this information. There was, what I know is they were supposed to abduct 2% of the American people and were given license to do so by Eisenhower and the government and it went way beyond that level. The Creator Treaty was signed at Holloman Air Force Base in New Mexico by the Ashes and the NSA Ultra Unit. Now at this point I was not quite sure of this term the Ashes refers to 
and it may well be a code name within the higher security clearance community for a specific group of ETs, although I could speculate it is the Phoenix group, as the Phoenix came out of the ashes. Oops. The original document of this treaty and its ET materials can be found today at the NSA facility called Blue Moon under the Kirkland Air Force Base in New Mexico. That reveals the colour of the programme. Blue was for ET interactions like Blue Book, Blue Beam and the fake Blue Avians. Now the entrance to this underground base is in the Mazzano Mountains. Also in this location is the technology base of the Secret Department of Energy. Currently free energy devices developed using reptilian and grey technology are being built for use in space at the base of the DOE. On April 15th, 1964, two intelligence officials met at Project Plato with the ashes in the New Mexico desert to set up an April 25th meeting at the Holloman Air Force Base in New Mexico. Now this meeting was to renew the treaty again in a psychological attempt to buy time in order to solve the problem of the ashes and the reptilians as a nightmare of truly epic proportions was now unfolding. That was the levels of the abductions going up through the roof, courtesy of Eisenhower. Phil Schneider was a geologist, structural engineer and underground tunnel specialist from the US and UN governments. UN governments? Oh my. And he participated in the construction of many dumbs in North America and other countries. Phil was murdered by the CIA on January the 17th, 1996 at his Wilsonville apartment in Portland just six days after the last invasion of the Drac Archons. That was the when the gates of hell opened up, courtesy of NASA and other people. Now, he died, Phil Schneider, the same week Carla Turner died in mysterious circumstances. After discussing and writing books on the alien invasion in relation to the Zeta reticulans, alien abduction and harassment of abductees by either or men in black or the US government. In 1979 in Dulce, New Mexico, Phil Schneider was drilling through the desert floor there to build an auxiliary base in the southern tip of Dulce on top of an existing underground base there. The existing base had been built by the US government in the 1940s under the Blue Operating Note, Blue again, but was later taken over by the ashes and reptiles. Over a two day period, Phil and his team made four holes in the desert which fell several thousand feet. One of the holes continued to raise dirty dust, rotten odours and pieces of machinery, machinery that were sent through the hole. Boring machines and lasers came back damaged when they were sent there. A probe was then sent and returned completely absent and eventually people were sent down. Don't send down the generals, do they? Cowards that sit uh, with the badges of dishonour in behind desks with pens. And Phil Schneider was the first person to go. He was lowered into the cave and when he got there about 10 feet away 
were two seven foot ashes two and a half meters so now i know what the ashes are known as the tall greys Phil said he was petrified but managed to empty a pistol clip into the ashes. While recharging, one of the ashes hit Phil with some kind of particle beam weapon that gave him a very high dose of nuclear radiation poisoning, similar to cobalt radiation, but even worse. Phil's lung was burnt and he got a huge scar running down his chest, which he showed in the lectures available on YouTube and it also caused him to lose parts of his fingers. In May 1995, suffering from terminal cancer, he began to give lectures in Las Vegas describing in detail the underground cities. The government's secret deal with negative aliens, the alien high technology being employed by the government, including corbomite, which is element 140, mining on the moon, FEMA and martial law. The new acquisition of the New World Order, the Alien Genocide Agenda New World Order to reduce Earth's population by 85% before 19, uh, not 19, sorry, 2029. And a number of other impressive revelations, it was said. Phil Schneider was an extraordinary man and a brave person who knew he would be killed because of the information he was revealing to the American public. His fingers on his left hand were burnt, his bones were burnt, he was basically cooked because of the weapon that hit him. He had been on radiation isolation therapy for more than 400 days. Now in the cave, large metal vats were found filled with parts of the human body, usually glands. In the tanks, there were high-tech agitation devices that prevented blood from clotting. In Mexico, Aztec, New Mexico, New Mexico, on February the 13th, 1948, an injured flying saucer was recovered by the U.S. military. The spacecraft was 30 meters in diameter, made of a lightweight metal similar to aluminum and contained bodies of E.T. reptilians. A large number of parts of, of the human body were also found on board the vehicle. The above the maximum secret safety cap was screwed on more tightly than Roswell to prevent mass panic. And the day after that accident, the vehicle was probably dropped off by the military and the government bought the property from the local owners. Witnesses in Aztec watched covered military vehicles truck in and out of the area for days after the accident and the ship was eventually transported to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, one of the biggest dumbs in this country and the disc incorporated large metal rings that revolved around a central st stabilised cabin. There were no rivets, dowels, screws or hints of grip. Now the people in Asda carefully guard their words about the records on the record. Aztec citizens are still being monitored by the military to this day. An elderly woman said her husband watched military trucks in and out of the accident area for many days and she said she was very nervous about the whole thing and did not want to talk about anything other than her husband seeing the military vehicles. And she was also asked if she believed there was an accident with a UFO and her response was if something hadn't happened out there how did the military get in? Why did the military trucks come in and out of the canyon? And why did they deny being there? And why were they buying all the land near and around where the UFO supposedly crashed? Now, of course, parts one and parts two of this series 
revealed the full details of that event. Casbolt goes on. In Cambodia in 1972, at the height of the Vietnam War, a US special operations team on Prato found a group of alien creatures carrying various parts of the human body in large metal containers and sealing them. A pitched battle ensued which resulted in the deaths on both sides. When the soldiers moved away, the aliens quickly retreated to their ship, taking the body parts with them. As usual, a great cover-up was quickly applied. Now what I know about those operations is those battles at that time largely involved what is now known as the Super Soldier Project, where humans were given DNA of differing animals and ocean mammals to perform certain superhuman capabilities. Now I believe this event that Casbolt is talking about in Cambodia and other jungle regions in South Asia was against what is known as now as the predator beings. And yes, those creatures in the movie are real. Caswell said one of his contacts in Wales, in the United Kingdom, who he said will call D to protect his identity, was approached by an elite intelligence organization called Group 5-8. This group was formed by Margaret Thatcher in the 1980s to work on targeting broken ET aircraft in Britain, and it is the first time that that information had been made public at the time. Although Group 5-8 was formed by Margaret Thatcher, it is a UN group. The man in the group 5-8 named George showed my contact with a UN identity card with UN holograms. George then took D to a clandestine meeting at a highway service station. But one just has to wonder who or what the United Nations actually is. And the reason I state this is not only because of this, is remember in an earlier show the term nation actually means race, not countries. United races, not United Nations, would bring up a whole heap of questions of which races are we talking about here. And it was here that George showed D photographs of human mutilation that they had found near Brecon's highly protected Dumb Lighthouse in Wales. These photographs were taken in an isolated area where the UFO activity had taken place and the photos showed a 16-year-old girl and a 20-year-old boy who had his genitals removed, eyeballs removed lips removed and directly half of the skin missing. George said that group 5-8 regularly found camping vans in this area with occupants disappeared. D understandably before he had nightmares for weeks was followed by a high-tech American van with blue lights underneath and I believe this was an NSA van. Days after that, D had his life threatened over the phone. The call was anonymous, but I told him to be quiet or his house would be set on fire with him inside. George then called D and said his life was in danger and for the information to be released as soon as possible to protect himself. Now the next day a gas supplier appeared and removed his identity. The moment the door was opened 
he entered and checked the meter. When he left, there was a fire that almost set the house on fire with Dee and his wife inside. Now, the house was destroyed eventually and the firefighters said the fire started mysteriously in the trash in the room where the gas man had read the meter. Casbolt provides some further background to this story in Wales. There was a spate of suicides of young people in the town of Bridgend in Wales. It's a very small town. 23 individuals had killed themselves in the space of 20 months. Seven deaths were linked as a possible cluster and the population is only 32,000 there at the time. David Kroll, 18, hanged himself in a derelict warehouse on January the 5th, 2007. His friend David Dillings, 19, hanged himself on February the 18th. Thomas Davis, 20, who knew both of them, hanged himself in a park a week later. Zachary Barnes, 17, who hanged himself on August the 11th, is also believed to have known the other victims. In December, Liam Clark, a friend of Kroll, was found hanged in a park. Gareth Morgan, 27, who knew Clark, died on January the 5th, 2008. Natasha Randall, 17, posted a tribute message to Clark on her Bebo page two days before she hung herself on January the 17th. On February the 13th, Kelly Stevenson was found hanged a few hours after her cousin Nathaniel Pritchard, who was 15, was declared dead following a suspected suicide. The two cousins were said to be very close, and on one of Ms. Stevenson's Bebo pages, there were tributes to Clark, Randall and Barnes. Jenna Parry, 16, found hanged on the morning of the 19th of February, was thought to be a close friend of at least one other victim. Now, Casbolt said he was directly briefed by British intelligence that in five of the news reports there were members of MI6 and Group 5-H Special Forces working on telephone poles and in telephone boxes in the background while cameras were interviewing newscasters. These operatives, it was said, they were searching for an item which had recently gone missing from the underground genetics facility below Brecon Beacons in Wales, known as Trap Door. Now, what this so-called item was, that had gone AWOL, was a chimera. And it is referred to as a feeder as being near to it reveals such feelings as intense suicidal tendencies and also depression. And the reason being is that it telepathically feeds on the taste of fear. So now you know why the authorities and media create so much fear. It is to feed these type of entities. Period. And this is one of the reasons that I keep banging on about in this show about 45-55 balance. It is to stop them feeding off of your energy, more commonly known as the looshing. But there is also another one of the so-called conspiracy that has gained much traction in the alt media recently that is engineered by inducing abject fear and that is called adrenochrome are you connecting the dots a bit more now
Hi all and welcome back. Right. Casbolt's story goes on. The Intel operatives in the news background are a message to the community saying we were attempting to get the situation under control and track this Chimera thing down. Now the reality of the situation is that the Chimera came into the town and engaged these young people in conversation. And it then telepathically hypnotised them with various subliminal messages and suggestions. I listened to a portion of a podcast today that was done recently where they described a certain group as all human. The answer is you don't know. Because they have this inbuilt technology where they can manipulate your thought process and make you believe you're talking to a human when you're not. And this is where much of when people ask for the disclosure you've already had it you've met these entities you just can't see it but I warned in 2020 we would see more not necessarily by using our eyes but this is how these beings operate the Sasquatch has the same capability. If it detects sound and they can smell humans from miles away. We have a particularly pungent smell compared to other species, according to them anyway. Uh, they don't smell particularly nice either. So the Sasquatch can then tune into your brainwave frequency and create a frequency that forms a picture where you will see a tree to use it as an example but that tree is in front of you may well be a sasquatch and this is why they're rarely seen they can t detect sound and smell from miles away Now, after the Chimera came into town and engaged these uh, young people who then all committed suicide, 27 of them, in just under 14 months. After this, the Chimera went back to the place it was staying, possibly a B&B, &B, and performed a type of remote viewing to the location where the individual was in the process of committing suicide and fed off the energies being released there. Now, for those in America, a B&B &B is your average hotel or motel, and it's called a bed and breakfast. And I bet you all thought you were sharing your hotel with humans, didn't you? <laughs> oh my, that shatters that illusion. Also, have I not mentioned previously of how the CIA controls most of the hotel chains? Connect the dots some more now. Modern scientific investigations, Caswell says, are now reporting that some reptile species on Earth have a type of orgasm when they die as huge amounts of endorphins are released. And I guess that is where the likes of Michael Hutchins, formerly of the group In Excess, died from his Sexual Strangulation Act. Maybe they learned that practice, one would surmise, from these people. After that D, another man and I were investigating reports of an idiot and missing children in the small village of Zenor in, in Cornwall, which is South England. 
There have been many sightings of alien beings on the cliff since 1960s and many UFO sightings around the area and large amounts of covert military activities. Some of the UFOs have disappeared into the ocean according to witnesses. These are better known as USOs, Unidentified Submerged Objects. Two years ago, a Devon and Cornwall police project classified as secret had proceeded, and this was an excavation for the children's mass graves by the police. They had tracked down the reports of many missing children in that area as well. And this was classified information at the time that Dee managed to get hold of from his contacts. As far as I know, the police found no bodies and the excavation area was isolated from the public. But Casbolt said, I think the police were looking in the wrong place. Of course they were. Because the activity seems to be coming from underground. And he said, when the poet D.H. Lawrence stayed in a small cabin in Zeno, he claimed he heard explosions from underground. Also, Alistair Crowley, an MI6 agent, spent a lot of time in Zeno. As already mentioned, MI6 and the CIA are heavily involved in the alien agenda, and he believes that Alistair Crowley was at their disposal. Now, Crowley had performed many satanic rituals in a hut in Zeno, and there seems to be a close connection with Satanism, the Greys and the Reptilians. But that all started with the Kali Ma worshippers, done by the jet black race on this planet, that went on to infect others, particularly the tribal peoples, with their off-world programs. That brought in human sacrifice and ritual offerings to these fake gods. Now, of course, Solomon and Herod took it to whole new levels of debauchery and mass killings, both known as the king of the Jews, whilst they, like Moses, were actually connected to Egypt, not Israel, of what I believe was the house of Israel under the Zodiac of Ophiuchus and the banner of the Anunnaki reptile group and the cult of Ra. Now in their house one night after Crowley left, a woman named Ka Cox died of a stroke and her husband went crazy and ended up in Bodman's mental asylum. The man said that a reptilian being materialised at their home and I believe that Miss, Mrs. Cox died of fear after seeing this. The corresponding police files relating to her death were stolen from the police station after that, and Alistair Crowley, who was also in Montauk, New York, when the project was in full swing, and there was a quantum grid energy line running from Montauk to Zeno, and the ancient men at tall stones in Cornwall. Now the men at all standing stones has an interesting correlation and also a possible connection to one of our previous shows. There is three stones, one upright lion stone on the left. The same on the right, and in the middle there is a round stone with a hole in the middle. And as you look at it, it shows one, zero, one. And one has to wonder if this is representing the fall of man, or in particular the female. Another side note is Montauk and the Long Island facility had a plasma beam technology that went up to the higher dimensions, the eighth, I was told, and was harvesting human energy there. Now this plasma beam and the occupants near to that facility was ended in 2014. The mainstream media did actually make a report 
of a fire underground below those facilities that same week. Everything fried. Now after the fire at Dee's house, everything had gone on quiet for a few years, but suddenly after two days of investigating missing children in Zeno, Dee spotted men outside the bedroom window when he turned on his lights. Now this is a common scare tactic used by intelligence agencies. I just scratched the surface of what is happening in Zeno and there is no room to enter here. The larger issue will be released soon, he said. So he asked the question, so what is happening to these human mutilations and missing people? The truth is that ashes and reptilians feed on glandular secretions and hormones through a type of osmosis adrenochrome and that is why the main organs are taken from people. Now this is where the trading practice of organ harvesting originates from and clearly some humans, mainly elites, took this practice up which is said to also ex uh, extend life longevity as well as getting a massive high other recreational drugs cannot deliver and it's addictive, highly addictive now your mind may want to deny that this is happening but if you start digging you will see that this is 100% true. And the question, for, the question for the listener to ponder on is, have you considered those using adrenochrome may not be human? Casbolt goes on. On the Crowded Skies website, there is a smuggled video of Dulce's underground installation which shows ashes, tall greys, inside vats absorbing these blood mixtures through their skin. Researchers Bill Hamilton and Tal, also known as Jason Bishop, received reports from Dulce dumb workers who worked there in the mid-1970s when they were jointly administered by the CIA the ashes and the reptilians that was before the ETs completely took over the base and expelled the humans now I can personally confirm that that was correct the rogue ETs threw the humans out and there were several battles and the last one of which to my knowledge was in 2013 where many ETs fled through the tunnels and there's more miles of tunnels below the ground than there is miles of road on the surface up to Dugway, Utah via maglev trains or other methods. Now the workers said that the Dulce facility goes down at least seven levels. Level six is privately called a nightmare hall amongst the workers. They speak of bizarre and multi-legged human experiences that look half human and half octopus, reptilian humanoids, hairy creatures with human-like hands that cry like a baby and imitate human words. Also a huge mix of humans and lizards in cages, several cages of winged humans, three to seven feet tall, of bats as creatures and gargoyles as beings. Now what this is, is the genetic mixing experiments taking place on that level, known as chimeras. The group named chimera is not all related to these experiments. At level 7, there are thousands of rows of human genetic mixtures in cold storage. Humanoid embryo storage tanks with embryos at various stages of development. 
That is the human breathing and seeding program. And so people will ask how and why. Well, in a recent show, we spoke about eugenics, which can also be termed genetics, which is stated as improving the human stock with higher evolved babies and cutting out the so-called weaker stock. But what if it was actually for ET advancements and not human advancements? So how is this accomplished? think abductions which has dropped off since the peace treaty think eugenics think Margaret Sanger think Planned Parenthood think aborted babies because if you do think enough you may ponder on it all being connected because it is another trick or stunt they play on us and is more prevalent than many would like to hear or think is this think babies being swapped out in hospitals that line will have horrified many but once you get over the shock of it all will know children in their own family or their friends and have wondered where the hell did they get that child from ponder long and hard on that revealing as all may not be as it seems other workers said they witnessed scenes even more terrifying than that and refused to talk about them one worker said to Bill Hamilton Often I found human in cages, usually stunned or drugged, but sometimes they cried and asked for help. We were told that they were crazy and involved in high-risk drug tests to cure insanity. We were told never to speak to them, and in the beginning we believed in the story, but finally in 1978 a small group of workers discovered the truth. Thomas Costello was one of the security staff at Dulce's facility. Thomas worked seven years for Rand Corporation in California when he was then transferred to Dulce in 1977. So, we have members of the Rand Corporation are sent to Dulce. This raises some serious questions in and of itself, does it not? Are the med beds associated with Jared Rand, who was a prominent member of the Rand family and corporation, promoting technology developed by other beings? Are they safe? What is the catch? With virtually all technology weaponized against us currently, what makes this device any different? And why, despite being a Bloodline family member, has he not been able to make this available to the public for testing and use? Now, Thomas Costello estimated that there were more than 18,000 small greys in Dulce, and he also saw tall reptilians. They're probably not tall reptilians, they're the tall greys. Some of them look like reptilians, but they're not. And he's distinguished it as grey greys, as some are other colours. Thomas knew of seven levels, but he said there could be more. He said the aliens were at levels five, six and seven. The lower you are, the greater the security clearance. And the only sign in English is above the metro transport system and says to Los Alamos. Now, what I can confirm is the security clearance is correct. I suspect those of cosmic clearance may be able to go so far down the levels, but not the bottom levels. That would require a majestic clearance. 
which I held until some other person on the internet decided to remove it from me. But also since then, uh, when Caswell wrote this, on the peace treaty signing, it is stated that humans were not allowed below level six anymore. As the goons at Wright Patterson found out, much to their cost. Now the tunnel shuttle travels at Mach 2.7 speed. And this confirms my earlier interjection of the maglev style trains. Now the speed Mach 2.7 may not sound much to the average person, but in our terms that is 2055.24 miles per hour. So instead of driving there 33 hours for the same distance, Glenn and Angela, it is just one hour underground should the tunnels connect to those two locations. Most of the signs at Dulce's facility are in the language of alien symbols and in a universal system understood by the humans and ETs. Thomas said Dulce's other bus connections were to Page, Arizona, Area 51, Nevada, Teos, Carlsbad, Dat Hill, New Mexico, Colorado Springs, and Creed, Colorado. Now what I can confirm is Creed, Colorado is full of reptilians. Their brochure to advertise their, what well, is a very small town, reveals it in humorous fashion if you know stuff like I do. Their brochure says, come to visit the Creed repository with the word rep all highlighted. And it's all there in your face for those who can see. Now, Thomas also just said that there are a vast number of tunnel transport connections in the United States, which extend to a global tunnel system for other ground bases in other countries. And that is correct. And this is why you never see elites on public transport. Thomas Costello said that below the second level of Dulce facility, everyone is weighed naked and given a uniform. Any change in weight is observed, and if there is a change in weight of three pounds or more, people are x-rayed. At the entrance to all sensitive areas, there are scales, and people's weight much, must match their identification card and code to obtain entry. Now, Thomas Costello managed to smuggle many things from Dulce's premises before he escaped, including 27 sheets of 8 by 10 photos of alien and genetic creatures in vats, a silent videotape from the surveillance camera, which starts with the display of computer benches and vats, several photos of the nightmare hall, two photos in shades of grey, a photo of the terminal sign saying to Los Alamos, and 30 seconds of the transport train arriving. 25 pages of diagrams, chemical formulas, schemes and alien equipment. A copy of the new alien government treaty with signatures. Two pages of original documents signed by Ronald Reagan then the Governor of California. Each page has Ronald Reagan's signature as well as other political signatures and four alien signatures. Thomas Costello's flash pistol, a laser type weapon used by Dulce's security officers. Thomas placed the original set of these items in a heavy sealed oxygen free plastic box. Five sets of copies are in five different boxes in five different locations, kept by five different individuals known only to Thomas Costello. 
Now, Caswell says he understood that these individuals would be afraid to leak this evidence as Thomas Costello's wife and son were kidnapped and disappeared in Puerto Rico shortly after that, and reportedly now both of them are dead. Now, Coswell asked if any of you are reading this who has that information to contact him anonymously, and then we can arrange for you to send me a copy, and he would be able to disseminate it on a larger scale. Now, there was part of an interview with Thomas Costello before he disappeared. And he said, I'm saying that there are aliens on various underground bases in this country and terrible things are happening in those places. If I die before it's proven, look for evidence. Demand that the government admit it. If enough people demand it, they will find a way to explain the basis or at least explain why they should keep it a secret. There are many people who work at Dulcie who know me. And I'm challenging these co-workers to speak anonymously, send a letter to confirm what I explained on behalf of the brave men, women, children and aliens who died trying to inform the public about what is really happening at the Dulce facility. Expose this horrible place before thousands of innocent people are tortured and die of unspeakable deaths. And when asked, a Dulce based security officer speaks out, the question asked was, what is your biggest fear? His answer was that the general public will forget the trapped innocent people in the despicable place Dulce and will ignore the hundreds of children, women and men added to that place every month. Now, since this was revealed by Cosbolt, Costello and many others, many of those trapped in there have been released in Dulce, but not in all of them. Um, particularly around the 2013 time zone. But many remain in hidden locations and the fight goes on to release the all. And hopefully one day they will be free. Right, on we go. The RAND Corporation, which is involved in the construction of these underground bases, launched the ROPA report. And this is now a third generation report that says, according to his research, one in ten people has been kidnapped and implanted by the greys and reptilians and has returned with their memories erased. Now this report was sent to 110,000 clinic, clinical psychiatrists in the USA. And the Roper report also states that women are being raped by reptilian ETs as part of an ongoing genetic program for them. Astral rape anyone? Now, as unreal as that sounds, it is supported by some of the best doctors in the world, like John Mack and many others. And there are 90 concerned psychiatric scientists in the US who are trying to form an organization to prevent secrecy in this dire situation. They say that because of the alien government treaties, this amounts to government-sponsored rape. And according to the Roper report, 99.3% of the abductees used in the ongoing genetic ET program are female and 0.7% are male. And Casbolt said he personally saw intelligence documents from studies on the grey and reptilian problem which show that they are involved in the genetic sabotage of the human race. The grey and reptilian alien agenda is to slowly and secretly dominate the planet over the next 30 years, reduce the population and manage the planet through the underground, 
using the surface population as food to be taken whenever and however they want. The British, Russian and American governments are shooting down about one grey and reptilian spacecraft a month with particle beam weapons developed using Tesla technology. The Russians have areas the size of football fields full of broken ET craft. If this is not a large scale invasion, I don't know what it is. Now the Russian, British and American government, Kasbolt said, became blood brothers and best friends because of the alien agenda. The Cold War of Russia and the United States was feigned animosity and a farce so that these governments could develop nuclear weapons programs to combat the alien threat. The Cold War was a lie to the public to divert attention from what the nuclear weapons program was actually being developed for, not against Russia, but as a last resort against the Greys and Reptilians. And he goes on and says the headquarters of the international secret body responsible for dealing with the ET phenomenon is in Geneva, Switzerland. And he said the government body is composed of representatives of the governments involved in addition to executive members of the group known as the Bilderbergers. Now, from my perspective on what you've just heard, is a bit of meddling with the facts and truth. And sometimes these whistleblowers were sent out with what they thought was the truth and reveal it in an honest faction or fashion or faction. <laughs> but they are fed misleading rubbish as well for plausible deniability. Now, I have heard or seen no evidence since 1963 of governments working together on this issue since Kennedy and the Khrushchev agreement in 1963, 11 days before the CIA killed him. And as for Switzerland being the secret body for alien issues and Bilderbergers, me thinks that is a complete misdirect to the public that. Although to balance it up, there is other evidence presented by another whistleblower that came forward to me connected to a reptile meeting and stated the term Cold War is the fact to cover up an ongoing war for the past 73 years, which is likely from around the 1930s timeline. And wars have been going on here as far back as 65 million years ago, which wiped out the dinosaurs. And no, it was not a meteor, but a weapon. Following a war between a humanoid, humanoid group, likely the Abraxans from Procyon, in the Pleiades constellation and the reptile group who came from a separate universe. Kasbolt goes on, as I said, the British, American and Russian governments are working closely together because of the grey reptilian threat to the planet. Although the situation is so dire that these governments are fragmented into, quote, panicking factions, unquote, some of which have run out and are directly helping the greys and reptilians. That's the split of the factions which we revealed five years ago. Now, according to William Cooper, a member of the US government, the most important meetings of this international secret body are held by the policy committee of a nuclear submarine under the polar ice caps. Secrecy is such that this is the only method to ensure that meetings are not corrected and that the only place where they will discuss their biggest secrets. Except there's something that I know that may um, counteract that because Marduk travelled much on a nuclear submarine. And what 
were likely describing is they were meeting their paymaster for further instructions of ending the human race, not saving it. Casbolt said it would be wrong and cruel of me to present your information without presenting the full picture. Orion, Greys and Reptilians are involved in an ancient war against the benevolent Pleiadians and other groups. The Pleiadians are a very powerful group and are the guardians of this solar system. Yes, they were. But one group of them sold this planet out for tech from the Reptile group. Isn't that right, Cobra? Which is why he's here. Personally, I don't believe they let the great reptilian agenda unfold completely. They have helped us in the past, and they are helping us now, and they will help us in the future, according to Casbolt. And he said, I know this because I've had many experiences of contact with paranormal ETs since childhood. He said there is no space to go into detail here, but it is covered in the presentation above the maximum secret with investigative journalist Dave Starbuck. And he said type in Rev Revelation Audio Visual Dash Dave Starbuck into a search engine to find it. It's probably gone now. And he said, I have a very clear photographic evidence of benevolent Pleiadian ETs materializing in my home and a channeled communication box with these beings. These photographs withstand a computer grain analysis test, but they are all 100% real. I also don't have the knowledge or technology to counterfeit them. A photo shows a very clear face materialising in front of me. I also have post-traumatic stress disorder from abductions and other contacts with malevolent reptilian entities. And again, these are covered, he said, in the above, the maximum secret. And he said there are a large number of missing children in Britain, America and other places connected to these underground bases. The figure in Britain seems to be at least 20,000 children disappear without trace every year. In a 1995 classified document, the CIA, DIA and an FBI report declared that 100,000 children and 1 million adults disappear and are never found in the United States every year. Now my understanding is it's 900,000 children per year, not adults. 900,000 per year. Now you may wonder how this is being covered up. As mentioned at the beginning of the article, the same group that works with the Ashes and Reptiles, MI6, CIA and MIEC, is the owner and controls the mainstream media. And I think our listeners didn't know there. But in 2001, Scotland Yard Police in the UK revealed that it was not possible to find 300 black boys aged between 4 and 7 who disappeared from London in a three-month period. The 300 boys disappeared between July and September of 2001. Now, the journalist Yinka Sunmono, an expert on missing children, told the BBC Today programme, children are here one day and disappear the next. In 1989, in West Chester, West Chester New York, the site of numerous UFO overflights and reports of human abductions at the time, uh, more than 3,000 missing children appeared after an extensive investigation by the local police departments. The children were not found in the districts or centres of the Red Cross. Researchers and police were perplexed. 3,000 in New York disappeared. 
It is also the case of the CIA. This involved negative CIA factions directly involved in kidnapping children and this was revealed in a 1987 U.S. Customs report. Customs and police raided a Washington, D.C. warehouse that was used by the CIA where they found a set of instructions transmitted through a computer network that advised the CIA to move an enormous number of kidnapped children who were originally kept in the warehouse and customs and police found a large number of diapers and other things there. There were instructions on the impregnation of female adolescents and instructions on how to avoid detection by the police. The destination for those children in the instructions was New Mexico. I think we covered that in a show about the group called The Finders, if memory serves me correctly. Albuquerque magazine published an article at the time entitled Why New Mexico has more missing children than comparable states remains a mystery. Much of this activity is centered in New Mexico where the Dulce underground facility is located. Now a survivor of the MI6 CIA Monarch Mind Control Project described in Fritz Springbeister's the Illuminati formula, the naval base of China Lake in Ridgecrest in the Californian desert. And this anonymous man says that lots of children of one, two and three thousand were kept in cages stacked up to the roof of large hangars. And he says that these cages are called woodpecker crates. These are electrified and the children were tortured with electric shocks. Today children are being transported to the China Lake Naval Base by train, car and plane. And one of the main routes for delivering children to China Lake is by plane through the Santa Rosa runway near the Bohemian Forest. Bohemian Grove. The Santa Rosa airstrip should be closed, he said, but planes take off from there every night and do not turn on the lights until they are hundreds of meters in the air. Nazi geneticist and mind control scientist Joseph Mengele, the angel of death from the Auschwitz concentration camp, was brought to America after the war by MI6 and OSS, who became the CIA, in the paperclip project. Many other Nazi mind control experts, rocket scientists and geneticists were also brought to America and Britain after the war. Now we cover this in uh, from one of the what from Russia with Love shows. Two hundred and fifty eight thousand flights to and from America in nineteen forty seven and nineteen forty eight quarter of a million flights now Joseph Mengele stayed at the base of Lake China and also at the Tavistock Institute in London he was also in Canada ain't that right Dr Cameron Dr Green and the naval base of Lake China China is the same as Lancaster, California, and it was in Lancaster that the graves of the mutilated children were found. Now, given the sheer amount of evidence, the only conclusion that Caswell can draw is that certain sections of the US and British government have sold us and our children to malevolent ETs in backdoor treaties. And he said the situation is really bleak. And he said, it's time we woke up. The New World Order and the UN World Government are this rigid control structure to lock people into the world, in the world into totalitarian addiction. So they don't have to tell us about the aliens. And 
I also believe that certain sections of the intelligence community and the governments of the United States and Britain are directly helping the greys and reptilians with their acquisition ad agenda. The evidence seems to point to ETs promising these humans certain powers when that happens. Now the name of the powerful secret group, the Trilateral Commission, is taken from the Orion Grey reptilian flag known as the Trilateral Insignia. This shows how many problems the human race is in, he said. There is now a deadly and contagious apathy among people about world events. This is especially true of the people of Great Britain. We have rarely become a nation of sheep. And I challenge you to get rid of this apathy and I challenge your government to tell the truth. Send copies of this article to local government officials and distribute it to your friends and family. This information desperately needs to be disseminated as widely as possible, but I cannot do this alone. I need your help. There is enormous pressure, he said, on governments to go public in the ET scenario, but there is also enormous pressure on them to not go public either. We need to demand that our government officials tell us the truth about the extraterrestrial scenario, and that ends the transcript of James Casbolt um, it is a mixture of brutal truth and some occasional misdirection or lack of knowledge which I have attempted to fill in the missing pieces of well thankfully the situation when this was reported has got much better and improved but it, it has not fully ended. It has just changed shape and format. And we continue to end this barbaric subjugation of the human race by psychopaths intent on our destruction. In the next section, we go deeper again into things that is both unpleasant and abhorrent in equal measure. But these things must be brought into the light for better understanding and a grasp of the bigger picture. Hi all, this next section was an interview um, some time back, around the same time as Casbolt put certain stuff out by a woman by the name of Arizona Wilder, formerly Jennifer Green. Green is not the real name. You know the program. And she was programmed and trained to conduct satanic rituals by Joseph Mengler. This is similar to the Svali story. Sally was not a victim, she was a trainer. So Mengler, from the Nazi death camps of World War II, uh, programmed and trained Arizona Wilder to conduct satanic rituals. Now the Green Program we have covered in other shows. Um, these, like we mentioned earlier, the Blue Program, Blue Book, Blue Beam, Blue Avians, uh, Blue Avery, and Blue Brethren are two others. Uh, go and check out the Blue Brethren, and you're going to see a load of ET people off the out of the alt media that are part of that program of disinformation, largely. But there is elements of truth in everyone. And then, of course, you've got the Black Sun, the Black Trust, the Black Eagle, Black Star, Black Dragon, Black Rock are all examples of the colour-coded programmes. Now, Arizona Wilder describes how she conducted rituals in which the Queen of England, the Queen Mother, and other members of the British royal family sacrificed children in satanic ceremonies. 
She talks of the same experiences with Henry Kissinger, George Bush, Bill Clinton, members of the Rockefeller and Rothschilds families, and a host of the most famous names in the United States and the United Kingdom. Your view of the world will never be the same when you hear these types of revelations of not just Arizona Wilder, but we also have covered the female trainer known as Zvali. Now the reptilians came to Earth, this particular group, about 4,000 years ago. Why? They followed the Aryans. whose bloodline they want to keep pure as they need their blood for their use. They look for Aryan features, blonde, blue eyes, and they prefer the blood of the Aryans. They prefer to impregnate Aryans with the semen of the head of the Illuminati known as Pindar. The Illuminati has pursued the Aryans all over the universe. For those who you have immersed yourself in from Russia with love, you will get that more. This is not just about white supremacy as all that rubbish. That's a cover-up. They've pursued the white race for thousands of years because their DNA and genetics are different to all other species. <coughs> now Arizona was identified as bloodline before she was born. She was addressed as mother goddess. One of only three mother goddesses allowed on earth. Well, I'm sorry to say, but that's her programming. Always with some special title to make you believe what they're doing. From my understanding, the goddesses were banned from here for previous transgressions, mainly for abandoning their planets, as I understand it. Now, the reptilians that she's talking about don't have the necessary psychic abilities so they pick others from the bloodline to control events through psychic means. They attempt to control events by predicting what will happen and then controlling it. Now from my understanding that is likely to do with the now defunct looking glass technology that was used by the Vril girls. And what they do is to call out the old ones from another dimension, although it, it could be another omniverse. I may cover that in, a, in another show. To attend the rituals from another dimension. And it needs someone with psychic power. And the reptilians don't have this ability. Now these old ones want to come forth out of what is stated to be the fourth dimension. But can't do that except during rituals. Now Christianity has called them out as demons. And yet Christianity has done as much to bring these demons in as any other religion. But this is why I warn of all forms of witchcraft. Light or dark makes no difference. You are calling in these demons. A circle inside a hexagon is a powerful occult symbol, she said. Inside a pentagram and a triangle. And these shapes stop the old ones from seizing the person who is summoning them. Why would you want to summon them to begin with? Now the old ones tell things during the ritual and give enormous power to the Illuminati and they don't want to cooperate but they have to. 
the demons want out of the dimension they're in being in the abyss and the fourth dimension is one to stay away from now my pondering on that is on that statement is the fourth dimension as described actually the third level and subsequently the astral level split, split in two levels heaven and hell now during an interview with David Icke he asked that why are the rituals related to the phases of the moon oh dear and Arizona stated that it was also the sun and they're using the Druid religion and the Egyptology religion as well. They call themselves Druidic, and Druids were tied in with the cycles of the moon, ritualization with Druidism, and they love their ritualization. She mentioned the Druid and Egyptian, but also the Celtic cultures were involved in the same ritual and sacrifice practices. She said people were bred from birth to be ritual sacrifices. It's very easy not to register a child when it's born. Children are kidnapped in third world countries, terrorised and mind controlled, sometimes drugged and used as blood sacrifices. The reptilians need their blood to maintain their human shape. They'll take various organs from the sacrifices depending on which date it is. They slit the throat from left to right and then they give the blood in a goblet to the reptilians and then to the people who have become party to the rituals. There are rituals every month of the year, usually more than one. Every full moon, the equinoxes, the solstices, Beltane and many others. May the first is Beltane. Halloween is the ritual occasion for the Councils of Thirteen. Three nights in a row, Halloween is the worship and homage to Satan the Devil. There is a lot of bloodshed, numbers of sacrifices and the popularity of Halloween is to desensitize people to the horrors. Now from my, essentially from my perspective, this is to lure as many of us as possible into the dark satanic practices of the left hand path of false illumination. And they're using the children who all love Halloween and their parents all the children have no idea what they're summoning with some of the um, ritual chants of Halloween. It's a bit like the Indian spiritual chants and a Native American. You have no idea what you're saying or what you're actually doing or calling in. The harvest festival is the same. Christian festivals are unknowing representations of the satanic rituals. Christmas is solstice related, a satanic celebration, the killing of the old king. The tree is a phallic symbol. The ritual on December the 24th is to do with the programming of children. Things would happen to the child that hung the last bulb on the tree. Rituals are done on this night to little children. The children are killed and families have to give away their children for sacrifice. She has seen George Bush at rituals, Henry Kissinger, Madeleine Albright, Ronald Reagan and Nancy Reagan. Hillary Clinton is involved, although she is not a shape-shifter. The two sons of George Bush were involved, who were then the governors of Florida and Texas. The latter became the president in fake circumstances in 2000, as we now all know. Jay Rockefeller, 
Newt Gingrich, Gerald Ford, Lydon Johnson, Joseph Mengele, all these, she says, are shapeshifters. Jimmy Carter was there, but he didn't shapeshift. All these people are connected to the Illuminati. In Europe, Prince Charles, the Queen, the Queen Mother, Princess Margaret, Tony Blair, all shapeshift. Prince Philip has his quirks even in his reptilian form. They are not all robots. They are all cold-blooded and would kill at the drop of a hat. The French president was there as well. I presume this was President Mitterrand. He of the Leo Wanta and the Reagan with his CIA one gang that raided the Russian assets. The Rothschilds were there. Guy the Rothschild is a shapeshifter. He uses the name of Dr. Barrington in the US. Now it's no surprise the Rothschilds family were part of it. As they have more reptilian, actually Draco DNA than any other family. And the shapeshifting is largely connected only to a reptile group. It's not as common as it's made out on uh, certain alt media sites. Now he, Guy the Rothschilds, had Arizona impregnated with seed from the Pindar, and she realised what was being done to her. Guy the Rothschild has tried to program Arizona. Arizona and get her back under control. Zachariah Sitchin was also at the rituals, not a major player in the rituals, but others were frightened of him. He talked about doing away with people putting out information he didn't want to put out. He is a disinformer, and he warned David Icke off from investigating the reptilians. Balmoral Castle Glamis Castle in both both in Scotland are used in the rituals. Now Glamis Castle is owned by the Leon family since the fourteenth century, which merged with the Bowes Leon line which produced the Queen Mother. Stonehenge, Westminster Abbey and the Mothers of Darkness Chateau in Belgium are all used for rituals. Alsac Lorraine region castle has a dungeon where rituals are carried out and also gives access to underground green glowing rocks which turn blood blacker which are used in certain rituals. Some reptilians are kept down there as pets. It is a very warm place to keep reptiles eggs and they keep them there. Now I suspect these pets, as she described, are not the Draco reps, but more of the small raptor race that still exist here. They're also in America, those small raptors. Now before Charles was involved with Diana, according to Arizona, she produced a baby with Charles, which was killed at a ritual. That's the price to be paid, the sacrifice of the firstborn in a relationship with a human. Camilla Parker Bowles doesn't shapeshift. Al Fayed was at Balmoral and he was talking with the Queen Mother. They call her the Black Queen. He was discussing his son Dodie with the Queen Mother and they were discussing a marriage between Dodie and Diana. Al Fayed has also been at the Mothers of Darkness Chateau in Belgium. Arizona never saw Diana at any rituals, but stated there was a malevolence towards Diana. Now, bearing in mind, Diana, who is a Spencer, was not some ordinary girl either. She is from the Tudor and the Stuarts bloodline. Arizona stated that all the royals have drunk human blood and ate human flesh. They had their own goblets with encrusted jewels. They had their own daggers. 
which they stirred the blood around in their goblets, which to them is a symbol of the phallus going into a vagina. All very Osiris and Isis, that is it not? The Queen Mother had a very elaborate ornate chair for her to sit at. Before the rituals, people moved around and talked in a ritualistic manner. They wear robes with nothing on underneath the robes. The robes are all very ornate and most are red in colour. Some have purple robes with gold lines running through them with the Merovingian Fleur de Lis symbol. Now we did warn about the Merovingians and the Carolingians in our From Russia With Love series. Sorry, they're not good. Now the reason they can't wear clothes, apart from these robes, is because they were going to carry out sacrifices, drink blood, eat flesh, shapeshift, and then do orgies. The Queen Mother, she said, is very cold in reality and very unlike how she acts to the public. She is cold-blooded, she enjoys consuming human flesh, and the only person she is afraid of is Pindar. Now, from the knowledge that I know, and I spoke privately to some other insiders, is that the Queen Mother was the voiceover for the pre-two-year-old children programs run by George Herbert Walker Bush, where they would terrorise the children. They would put um, poisonous serpents, um, large cats, and the ones that survived went on to the second stage of the program. The ones that didn't were consumed. The reptilians, she said, live for hundreds of years and they have assumed many different forms of human bodies. She, the Queen Mother, still has life for years to go. Her essence and her reptilian form will go into another human body from the pure reptilian bloodline. Shapeshifting happens so fast, they get taller and bigger, they look very different in full form. They need the robes on as the clothes would be torn apart. The Queen Mother's nose gets much longer. She has fangs, incisors with their tongue, being hairy and also very long. They have no hands or feet but claws and scales. Their tails get whipped around when they are agitated. The Queen Mother is beige on the underside. The snout is speckles of dark brown. The eyes are large and round like they're coming out of the sockets. Their eye colour is beige to gold to darkish green with vertical slits. When the eyes are hooded, they are about to do something. The lids come down and they are about seven feet tall. Prince Charles resembles Pindar in reptilian form, but is shorter than Pindar. The Queen is darker all over, not so much freckling and smoother and she has lumps around her head. Charles has protrusions from his skull where his ears had been, <laughs> helicopter head, and the scent of blood sets them off into shape-shifting. She stated they can't wait to get to the blood and also the flesh. They are addicted the royals will do the sacrifice, or if someone's doing it for them, it's not fast enough. They'll step in and finish the tearing to pieces, tearing the throat out, getting the blood from the juggler, and then they go into a frenzy and can't wait to get at the victims. People who are not titled 
don't dare step in. They have to wait. They can stay in their reptilian form, but they have a hard time holding their human form. Diana was chosen from birth before, for the purpose she served, to have two children and then be tossed aside. She never attended the ritual, but she knew what was going on and she wouldn't cooperate. She realised more of what was going on after marrying Charles as they have a tendency to shapeshift when they're asleep. When Diana was going through a menstrual period, they might momentarily shapeshift or any other woman in the royal household. They smelt the blood, you see. Her unborn child in the crash was part of the sacrifice. Guy the Rothschilds was in the tunnel when she died. He was there to take the soul of Diana. The Illuminati wanted to capture her soul and the hypnotic stare and the ritual murder. People don't believe what they're hearing about Diana. The Illuminati depend on people not realising they are there. But the Illuminati can't hide as easily as they once could. Now, Diana was a mind control victim from the early part of her life and she was diagnosed with disassociated identity disorder. And this is a common theme for people within the programmes and explains much of those housed in mental facilities also. And what people don't realise is it is far more common than you may want to think. The alt media alone is riddled with programmed people. All the super soldiers, org tellers, Randy Morgans, Madeley Neatain, Chloe Kirker, Laura Leon, Shane the Runer, Stuart Swerdlow, Mark Passio, Patty Brassard, and the list goes on and on. Now some of these people have turned against us over time, and by and large it was their programming and their handlers doing that and in most cases, not the original version of them. They are switched with the altars. And these people are all victims of horrifying abuse. But they need to fight through their programs. As neither I or THI are the enemy. Diana would have missing time, marks on her body and needle marks which they can't remember where it came from. Arizona doesn't think that William is Charles's but William is the son of Pindar. She was impregnated but she didn't realise that and the baby symbolises Horace. Oh my... The son of Pindai, Pindar, symbolises Horus. Yes, that trio of darkness, all complete in one story. Osiris, of which all obelisks are homage to him, via the penis. Isis, which is represented by the fake country, is Ra'el. Isis, Ra'el. Switzerland, the said neutral country of the Rothschilds, is named after the twin sisters, it is said. The twin is, is and is, and so Isis. And Horus is the real name for Jesus. There was no letter J until around the 15-1600s time. And I'm sorry if that upsets the many Jesus followers, but those are the facts you will find for yourself 
if done with an open mind. The Bible is the story of these reptilians and their offspring. Noah, Melchizedek and Moses had scaly skin known as the mark of the Nephilim and no it was not eczema or psoriasis it was reptile skin. The Bible is the book of the Hebrew Anunnaki and again you will find that out for yourselves with an open mind. It's all there and covered by our From Russia With Love series. Do you really think Horus is coming back after 2,000 years? Or Jesus? Well, listen to this. In 2000, the year 2000, is the age of Horus. Oh my. And there is a sacrifice involved. The mother and the baby and it involves the survival of another child by the same mother. Diana left that tunnel dead and she had to die at that tunnel and they had to take her soul in that tunnel and to take the essence of that unborn child. They would have taken the fetus and the uterus as ritual and they would have removed other body parts which would have been distributed to high Illuminati members to consume. The year 2000 is the age of Horus, they said. And we have the 2000 year return again as mentioned by the trustee. But 2000 was also known as Y. 2k one has to ponder now whether that was Yahweh to Kali Ma Earl Spencer Diana's brother has also been seen at rituals he is tied into the bloodline her father was also present at rituals he would have been involved way before she was born Diana's bulimia and self-harm is typical of mind-controlled children and he would have been involved in that, her father. This, of course, brings in the shows we did on the Sfali training called Illuminati 1 and 2. All bloodline children appear to go through this training and subsequent programming. She said children can be programmed to do just about anything and they can memorise just from a glance. When asked was Henry Paul the driver a mind controlled individual she said he could have been drugged and programmed. Programmed people can show no effects from alcohol or drugs. Now personally I have to disagree heavily with that statement. It does have a massive effect. I know that with living with and talking to programmed people. She said one of his programs would have been trained to hit the 13th pillar. Yes, the numerology geometra game they like to play with. Geometra is more Hebrew Anunnaki codes and coding. Ain't that right, Q? She said he would not be conscious of what he was doing. He would have been triggered with a preset signal. The trigger could have been a hand signal, a handshake, a colour flashed, a certain person doing a signal, whoever was present. Arizona's handler was Dr. Mengler, who died in 1989, and that helped her to recover from her programming. Her altars were loyal to Mengler, but Baron Guy de Rothschild tried to take over, but it only worked partially. 
Arizona cut her hair off in 1993, which was not permitted, and she couldn't be seen in public. Now, this is similar to Britney Spears shaving her hair off episode, and is symbolic of the person coming out of their programming. Of course, the media portrayed her as going psychotic. But she was coming out of the programs and remembering she was being used as a sex kitten for all the leading politicians in Washington, D.C. Fact. Monarch girl. Arizona was always told she was their property. They still have plans for Arizona as she has great psychic powers that they need. High-ranking survivors get sent a ring from the Mothers of Darkness. As a child, she was electro-shocked to the point that her parents were told by teachers she was retarded. She has no medical records, her birth certificate tampered with. Now this is similar to our, one of our former members and my former girlfriend, Chloe Kirker. Her birth certificate had no name on it. And yet it was registered. I suspect she wasn't expected to survive the programs. Arizona had her eyelids taped open, drugs injected to put nerves on fire and the merest touch would torture. She was given electrical stim stimulation on genitals and teeth and injections into her gums and under her nails. She has been programmed to be both anorexic and bulimic and was forced to eat her own feces and drink her own urine along with experiencing sensory deprivation tanks. Dislocated on body parts to traumatise her, tones or frequencies projected into her. She had directed energy, microwave energy, with one tone heard in one ear and a different tone in the other ear. She was also programmed to run red lights. They have used her children against her and what happened to her is happening to her children also. She's very anxious to expose the Illuminati what they're doing to children all over. Her children are told that their mother just left them and this is very hard for her to take. Now in the video she repeats that the reason she's speaking out now was, which was in the 1990s, is because her children have been taken away from her. Now this is common for the monarch females. They target their children and turn the children against the mother, tell them that their mother has gone psychotic or nuts. I've spoken to monarchs who this has happened to. And it's the classic psychology tactic that is often seen within the alt media today of turning the victim into the perpetrator, make up lies, make them look bad. And it's all the same program, just on different levels. A pattern once found often repeats. And this is what we see with this program. But these people, if you can call them that, are more exposed now than in the past. And many of this type of operations are much less today, given the exposure done by many within the community. But our work is not done. We will hunt you down and seek you out and expose you until it is all the others saved. We are 
the Shadow Hunters. Hi all and welcome to the final part this evening. A bit um, less uh, gun uh, stomach wrenching. I guess my Miwi Jeff has took a quite a hammer in this evening. <laughs> Uh, th this stuff is just uh, horrible to reveal and I've known about a lot of this stuff for a long time and it's always about the timing and um, whilst it may be unpleasant for us to hear we um, observe not absorb that's the key Thankfully, uh, those or most of those that listen to this show will not have gone through those horrendous experiences. It can never be as bad as what happened to them. But what we can do is highlight it. And this is why I've done this show now, because there's key, they are coming up to a key time again. And by highlighting it, it's pushing it more into the light and less out of the dark. They don't like coming into the light. There was a recent FBI document released from 1956 revealing that Nikola Tesla was brought to Earth by space people. And it was stated Tesla's engineers built a sort of station that could communicate with space people and they told the engineers that they dropped Tesla off with Mr. and Mrs. Tesla in a remote mountain region in Yugoslavia and stated that he was Venetian. which may or may not be believable to many, but let's have a reminder of part two of this series from an official classified majestic level document where the EBE, extraterrestrial biological entity, mentioned dropping off babies also. So these events do have credence. But the question remains is just how prevalent are these events and how does it change our world and timelines? Does it go down as interfering? What is the whole purpose of it? As it was not clearly not stated within the transcript of that speech with the EBE. And should I ever get my majestic clearance back, I want the rest of that transcript. It needs to be put out. So, who is collecting these children? Does this explain the high number of babies being swapped out in hospitals? And yes, it does go on far more than most realise or people would like to face or address. But what about whole peoples appearing out of nowhere? Like the Bantus in Africa. They just appeared in northwest Africa out of nowhere and then quickly spread to other areas of, of Africa. Some have stated they just arrived by boat from nowhere and yet there is no recording of their previous abode in history anywhere. Now magic takes a major central, central role in Bantu belief with good and bad influence and the Bantu believed in the separation from body and spirit after death 
and they often saw a manifestation of the souls of deceased ancestors in ceremonies. Now, there's a cult connected to this called the Afro-Brazilian Quimbanda cult. And it is a new world manifestation of the Bantu religion and spirituality. Quimbanda practices are typically associated with magic, rituals with exus, E-X-U-S, and Pomba Gyrus spirits. Quimbanda was originally contained under the religious tradition of Macumba. Macumba is considered by non-practitioners to be a form of witchcraft or black magic. But perhaps this next tribe who are linked heavily as part of the Bantu may give some further clues or origins. The Lembas, L-E-M-B-A-S. These peoples mainly live in South Africa or Zimbabwe. Now, following a genetic research test carried out by British scientists over the years, found them all to be of, quote, Jewish origin, unquote. The name Lemba derives from Lembi, or Lembai, which means non-African or respected foreigner. Every Lemba male undergoes circumcision. They also do rituals and sacrifices, but it's said to be only animals. They have strict rules and do not allow marrying outside of their culture, just like the Jewish. However, in some circumstances it is allowed, but only if strict rules are adhered to. For example, a non-Lemba male to marry a Lemba female, he must undergo circumcision and purification to do so. If a Lemba man wishes to marry a non-Lemba woman, he risks being banished from the tribe unless the woman complies with Lemba rules and cultures. Their ritual sacrifice, called the Passah, is said to be a direct copy of the Jewish Passover. The calendar of the tribe follows the path of the moon only. So this is a moon cult and it's Lilith worship again. They share the same language but have some disparities of religion. It is stated as some have more of a Muslim flavour within the tribe. But Islam means Isis hidden. And is Ra El means Isis and Ra are God. It's the same program again. But they are also described as more Semitic than African. Now the Semite people came through Shem, which was stationed in Asia, not the Middle East. Their symbol is of a six-pointed star with an elephant in the middle. So the star of David, which is Egypt, not Israel, and the elephant, whilst native to Africa, is also a large part of the culture of India. Flying elephants and all that malarkey. The exodus of the Garden of Eden was out of India to Egypt that formed the cult of Ra. But maybe those who were thrown out arrived in Africa via boat and today are called the Lemba or Bantu peoples. Or maybe, as the EBE stated, of dropping babies off on this world is a confirmed practice. But the big question is, with these Bantu peoples who came out of nowhere is, what if they were dropped off also?
What if the whole of these Hebrews have been dropped off here as foot soldiers of the Anunnaki? Did Moses receive the laws known as the Ten Commandments from God or the Anunnaki beings? Evidence of Moses, Noah, Enoch and Melchizedek all being non-human along with Adam and Lilith are plenty in our From Russia With Love series. In the book of Gen Isis, Generation Isis, it reveals Yahweh, the leader of the Shining Ones, planted a Garden of Eden which is in the east. It didn't say Middle East, it said the east. Enoch walked with the Shining Ones, then he disappeared because the Shining Ones took him away. The Shining Ones are those of the false illumination and the left hand path. But I will leave this show with another question based on what the EBE stated in part 2. When he was asked are these children being dropped off here human and his answer was it depends on what you define as human. <laughs>